Douglas Cooling and Heating, serving the Birmingham area for 38 years, 988-3706. That's Douglas. This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, July the 16th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters, and it looks like some unusual weather continues for central Alabama. We had a high in Birmingham yesterday of only 84. Can this possibly be July? Well, yes, especially if you look at the humidity. Tuscaloosa Skycam this morning. Uh, we've got a, a bit of cloudiness across uh, central Alabama. That's helping to keep the temperature down a little bit. And that's wonderful because uh, I'd much rather have 84 than 98. And there's a look at Decatur. And you can see it uh, looks like a little break in the clouds overhead as we look out over the Tennessee River. We have uh, a, a bit of a, a complex pattern. Uh, the combination of a large high-pressure system just off the Mid-Atlantic states, along with a, an upper-level uh, weakness, is helping to enhance shower possibilities across central and south Alabama. As a matter of fact, south Alabama is going to be the focus for a good deal of rain over the next uh, several days. There's uh, the surface map, and you can see that high-pressure system. That high-pressure system helping to enhance an easterly flow, kind of not exactly, but kind of a wedge pattern, and uh, temperatures across the north part of Georgia only in the, the upper uh, mid and upper 60s uh, over there. And in the upper atmosphere, we've got this weakness that is centered uh, or shown over Georgia. It's, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's uh, kind of, I would put it actually a little bit over southeastern Alabama. But anyway, uh, that is helping to enhance the shower chances, and it looks like that's going to continue uh, at least through tomorrow. However, it is summertime, and despite the fact that we have had a rather cool high for central Alabama, the heat continues. Look at those 60s all the way up into central Canada. And remember, once again, point out, this is the 5 a.m. temperatures. Across central Alabama, we're generally in a range from 70 to about 76. However, notice the temperatures over in the northern part of Georgia. Those are in the 60s. So again, the wedge, and you can see the easterly flow, that wedge effect coming into play. Showers already occurring basically under that weakness across southwest Georgia, southeast Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle, as well as the Mobile area, the southwest part of the state. And the QPF pit folks uh, basically focusing on that weakness as the area for the most rain in the whole country over the next uh, five days. And that looks pretty good, although it looks like for central Alabama, we might see a bit of a break on Monday and Tuesday. The uh, Storm Prediction Center outlooking a slight risk up in primarily North Dakota. But uh, and also see text where you know marginally severe storms each day across the the uh, Gulf Coast area. The uh, slight risk moves over into the Lake Superior area and upper peninsula of Michigan, parts of uh, northern uh, Minnesota and uh, northern Wisconsin, and then on day three it moves over into New England and uh, parts of the Mid-Atlantic states and across uh, the eastern part of the Great Lakes. And the National Hurricane Center not watching anything of any real significance. The 06E GFS model run this morning, and you can see that weakness. Uh, the 594 heat bubble pretty strong over the, the central U.S. However, we've got that weakness helping to keep things a bit unsettled for us. That weakness stays with us. Even though the 594 expands, the weakness stays with us. You can see it over the Gulf Coast on Sunday. Now, on Monday, we see that heat bubble uh, expand into our area a little bit more, and the weakness seems to move along the Gulf Coast down towards uh, Texas, and that show, shows up in the GFS with very uh, on the surface map with very little showers over our area on Monday. And I think we'll see a bit of a minimum on Monday. Can't rule out the possibility of an isolated storm, but I think for the most part we'll see many few showers on Monday and Tuesday. As you can see, the 594 contour uh, stays pretty strong into the area, and that weakness is now down in South Texas. By Wednesday, I, the 594 shrinks, and I think we'll see isolated storms uh, returning pretty much. Uh, the 594 goes away on uh, Thursday. So once again, I think that means that we're just going to see a return to the daily chances for showers, kind of, kind of the climatological forecast we have for this time of year. Friday, 
There's uh, no evidence of the 594, but the ridge certainly strong, extending all the way up into the Great Lakes. And then on Saturday, a week from today, the 594 returns. But still, I think we see uh, showers as a possibility each afternoon, uh, pretty much by Saturday isolated. Looking out ahead into uh, voodoo country, oh, I like the looks of this. Look at this, the 27th of July. Now, we've seen this look before. As a matter of fact, I think it appeared last weekend. Uh, but uh, I certainly do like the looks of that. That would certainly be cooler and offer us a pretty good chance for some rain uh, prior to uh, this day, maybe on Tuesday. And then uh, the pattern stays that way pretty much with a, a bit of a trough over the eastern half of the country uh, all the way to the end of the month. So let's hope this comes true. Well, thanks for tuning into the Weather Extreme video. I expect to have the next one posted around uh, 8 o'clock or a little before on Sunday. Hope that you have a wonderful Saturday and Godspeed. Each day there are new stories to tell about the people who live here and the place we call home. All of the faces that I see, all of the places close to me, they're all part of all the best things about home. Sharing your stories on ABC 3340, Alabama's news leader.